So our uh, party topic today, we we have some stuff to talk about, but there was this one particular presentation, the Indie World presentation on the 14th. Uh, that was uh, Wednesday. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that was yesterday. That was Wednesday. Um, so, yeah, the Indie World from Nintendo, uh, this new presentation, uh, I think it's the second Indie World of the year so far. Oof, finally, uh, I was hoping out. we could talk about some indie games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there's there's only a few games that we're very interested in, but uh, uh, if you want to throw one at me real quick and we maybe go back and forth or something. Cool. Uh, let's start with, I think, the most straightforward one. So Oxen Free 2 was announced. So Oxen Free is made by Night Studio, who made obviously Oxen Free one, but they also <laughs> made uh After Party, which is the story of these this this guy and girl, these best friends, who die somehow and end up in hell. And the only way that they can escape hell is by beating Satan in a drink <laughs> excuse me. Is by beating <laughs> Satan in a drinking game. Uh, so it's it's a very cheeky, cleverly written game. I we were talking off off mic that I wanted to really like that game, uh, but I didn't. But I really did like the first Oxen Free game. On the first Oxen Free game, you are on an island with your friends. You're in high school. Uh, you go off onto this island and you choose dialogue options and explore the area, and there is some mysterious signal on the island, like an alien sort of signal where if you've got your radio and you tune to it, you can hear weird things that make weird things start happening. Um, I never beat that game. I probably got two thirds of the way through it and I set it down for a little bit and I didn't finish it because when I wanted to come back to play it, I'd forgotten everything I had done. So <laughs> uh, I would like to go back and finish that, which means I will probably need to restart it. But I really like the game. The soundtrack is good. Uh, the character dialogue is really clever. The voice acting is good. Um, overall, it's a pretty solid game. And so the second game presumably takes place right after the events of the first one. It looks like uh, I, I saw at least one character who is from the first game that is still on the island. And like I said, I didn't finish the first game, so I can't really talk to the bridge between the two of them. But I can tell you that I really like that game and there's a lot to enjoy about it. Um, if you watch the Oxen Free 2 video and you don't know what's happening, go watch a trailer for the first game because it gives you a little more insight to what the gameplay looks like and um, and all that. But it's a, it's a beautiful game. It's a very indie game, but, uh, well, there's no but there. I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> I, I like it a lot. Yeah, that trailer had some very Stranger Things, X Files y vibes to it. That looks like a, a nice wrinkle yeah. to add to that. It it's got it's got like it's uh I don't know. It it's like uh It's a game where at least the first one you escape with your high school buddies and you're like, Oh, let's just go have fun on this island. We're gonna sneak away and like drink some beers and hang out on the beach and stuff. Uh but then there are like some eldritch things that like slowly drip themselves into the story <laughs> and it just slowly gets more and more off the rails as whatever this eldritch thing is this spooky creepy old god lovecraftian thing as it creeps its way into the story and suddenly it's like whoa things went from like pretty playful and totally okay to like very very unsettling <laughs> uh in a way that i thought nice. i thought was really uh impactful awesome so, yeah. um my uh my first pick from the presentation was uh aerial knights never yield uh this is a, a game uh, obviously by aerial knight that's what you'll find him as uh on twitter uh he is a solo developer that uh let me just just go into here as his own website says um this project began as just a passion project. I started on my own to create something familiar but new for this generation of gamers while highlighting aspects of a culture that is often overlooked. Uh, he said, uh, I went from developing this game on my own from all of the art to the game design to the VFX, marketing, and cutting the trailer to recently landing a publisher to help me finish the game. Wow. And it, it's coming out on like all systems. And uh, what, what uh, Never Yield is... Um, 
is technically a 3D side scroller, but it's the gameplay is close to a an endless runner. Um, but add in the the parkour of a Mirror's Edge, or uh, even kind of uh, gave me flashbacks, kind of to my friend Pedro, uh, a little bit. Um, the graphics are just this this nice uh, Afro punk, uh, beautiful, somewhat futuristic, uh, not dystopian, but definitely uh, a sci fi feel to it. Uh, very very stylized gorgeous game you would not believe that one person created it um i've been looking forward to it since i i saw it on a uh on a twitch stream that was that was boosting uh black presentation in games and it's it's coming out may 19th looks like a great time it's a 15 dollar game probably in the five or six hour range uh it's something that looks pretty pretty easy to get into um and of course, helping out a solo developer uh, get their get their message out, uh, especially somebody that's that's put in the effort as as he did. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And and just on the day of the presentation, uh, on his Twitter, he said, uh, "Remember, this game was made by someone that the games industry rejected time and time again, and never gave me a real opportunity." Um, his his whole thing is about his perseverance in the industry uh and you know if if we can signal boost that uh i'm i'm down for that yeah definitely buying that day one so let's see i've next i've got uh the longing so full transparency i have more research to do about the longing uh because this seems like an intentionally unclear game because it seems like the game itself has a totally unclear objective which is the point of the game so the longing is made by studio sifs maybe we agreed on that being how you say that um i apologize it's s-u-e-f-z they are from somewhere that i'm gonna say in a second germany Germany, that's right strasburg strasburg that's right uh, so they made The Longing. The Longing is a game, it's a, described as an idle game where you play for or play or idle for 400 real life days. And your character, like even in the trailer, is just kind of wandering around, <laughs> just sort of figuring out what the heck he's doing. And um, it's just really intriguing to me. I mean, it's as confusing as I just made it sound. <laughs> Uh, but it's called The Longing. Um, Reb Valentine, who is a friend of the show, uh, she wrote an article when she was at gamesindustry.biz about it. And I have it bookmarked, but I haven't had a chance to read it. But she said very good things about that when uh, the Indie Showcase was playing the other day. So if she was excited enough about it to write an article and preach that more people should play that game, honestly, that's, a good, that's good enough for me. So I'm going to go find that article. Uh, I will post it. Um, well, I'll reshare it on the party invite socials on Monday when this goes up, but um, I'm excited to see what that game is because it is confusing, but I'm intrigued by the very slow pace of it and the idea of idle games, like an actual idle game and not just like a mobile microtransaction game mm -hmm. really intrigues me. Uh, especially the way I consume games these days. I usually have a screen up playing something that I'm half paying attention to while I'm doing something else. Maybe I'm playing my own game. Maybe I'm uh, doing paperwork. I mean, maybe I'm watching a stream while I'm also playing Wilmot's Warehouse, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the idea of like an idle game like this is very interesting to me. So I want to learn more about it and then probably idle myself away on my computer <laughs> and kind of watch it. Uh, while I'm doing other things. Sounds like a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, next on my list is Getsu Fumaden Undying Moon, uh, which is... Uh, it, everybody found out that it was a throwback uh, after the presentation. It's a sequel to a Famicom game that's almost as old as I am. Uh, it's a 3D side-scrolling action-adventure, very Metroidvania-looking, just... Hardcore, 
Awesome. <laughs> that's that's really the best way to say it. Uh, <laughs> Is that the best way to say it? You're like, look, hardcore, <laughs> awesome. That's it. Yeah. Send it. I, I mean, it's being published by Konami. Uh, oh, they kind of yeah, know how to do one. this. Uh, I remember when I it's... saw the announcement, uh, the internet was like, yeah, that Konami. <laughs> yeah. It's got this amazing Japanese hand-drawn art style that is just out of this world uh stupid gorgeous um it's it says it's got uh 10 stages so 10 stages a boss for each stage the typical uh hack and slash uh but it's just super cool looking it looks like a, a mix between uh side scrolling ninja gaiden and castlevania and that hits all the marks that it needs to hit for me mm -hmm. um and I, I think the actual developer i it's something like Guru Games or something like that. Um, there's not a whole lot of information about them, but uh, I think this is actually their first game, and that's why uh, Konami's put in a, a lot of faith uh, into this indie to get this game out, and I cannot wait. It's coming in uh, 2022, but it is going to be on my list until the day it comes out, for sure. I'm, it looks intense. I'm interested, dude. That's funny to me that that's the Cap or the uh, Konami game. Mm -hmm. um, a sequel to a Famicom game. How about that? <laughs> that's <laughs> wild. Yeah, it's a a real throwback, and it uh, it kind of reminds me of um, what Capcom did with uh, Shin Sakai Into the Depths uh, last year. So, if it's anything similar to that, and it looks like it, it's going to be better than than that was. Oh my god. I'm definitely down. Cool, cool. Uh, well, the next on my list is Road 96, which I kept saying the incorrect name for, which I'm not going to repeat here because I'm not <laughs> going to confuse you guys. Anyway, Road 96 is a... Uh, I thought it was a choose-your-own-adventure game, which technically kind of still is, but apparently it's a procedural game um, made by Omen Presents, like Omen's... Wait, I typed in Omens. I think it's Omen. Let me double check. But it's uh, Omen as in... Okay, it's Omen Presents. As in Omen Gaming, like the PC gaming company. Uh, which I had no idea until I, I started doing some research. It seems like Omen is properly trying to get into the like production of gaming side of the business. Not just producing hardware. Um, so we'll see how they do. Diversifying their portfolio here. But anyway, uh, Road 96 is a game. The trailer showed... It showed this character who's following you, the protagonist, around. And... Basically, what's the tagline for this? It says there's a character that's trying to escape to the border, I believe. Let's see. Uh, summer 1996. Today is the day. You hit the road. Adventure, freedom, escape, run. Flee. Or you could say uh, you flee this that you try to survive on this risky road trip to the border you'll meet unusual characters discover their intertwined stories and secrets in an ever-evolving adventure but every mile opens up a choice to make your decisions will change your adventure change the people you meet maybe even change the country's destiny there are thousands of roads across the authoritarian nation of petria which one will you take so this is road 96 right it's 1996 and the game presents itself as having a thousand different routes. Who knows what that means if it's procedurally generated? I mean, No Man's Sky had like a million billion planets, but I visited six, you know? <laughs> so who knows? Who knows what that means? It remains to be seen. I don't want to get too blown up on the pitch of this game before I kind of see the reviews. But the idea that they're selling, I like it. I, the idea that it is procedurally generated too, uh, that you'll be going, you will meet characters, make decisions, different things will happen. And then based on what you were telling me, Carlos, it sounds like if you make a bad decision, you can get like an ending kind of quick, like where you can just do yeah. something that like a, not, not like, Oh, I failed. Like in the trailer, it shows you like running from the cops or running from some bad guys um, it didn't seem like, you know, I'm sure there's an ending that's like, oh, you didn't escape from them because you messed up the actual gameplay of it. But it, 
I'm thinking of endings where it's like, oh, you probably should not have picked a fight with the biggest, scariest person in the room, kind of. Thing. <laughs> um, but if they say there's a thousand routes, you know, it is exciting to think of all the ideas that, you know, like a road trip story can have, because you're traveling with like a young kid, and I think the idea is that if you're a young kid on like a road trip, like a wild off the rails adventure like this, you really have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, I went on road right. trips as a kid with my family and I was along for the ride. I would, you know, I was <laughs> driving the car. So I like this idea of having a young kid be kind of in the steering or, you know, in the driver's seat because who knows what's going to happen. But I'm excited for this. This is the very first trailer I saw out of this entire presentation. And uh, yeah, I, whatever they're selling, I'm buying. <laughs> Yeah, it, it looks very high concept, but if they pull it off, it's going to be hella good. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it the trailer made it seem definitely like uh, you could get into the car, basically, and like one of the characters might be good, one of the characters might be like this violent enemy type, uh, and between playthroughs, it's completely different for everybody, so... Uh, like, all these procedural games just keep coming, and that looks so good. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling you before, uh, in a nutshell, I've been recently playing A Wolf Among Us. Uh, Shell, who we recently had on the podcast, she is a big fan of The Walking Dead. Uh, I watched our community member Stream Noodles play Henry Stickman, the first game made by the Among Us creators. And that game is, all, all you do in that game is pick endings. Like you pick all right, you're going to walk through this door. Which of these four options do you pick? And each of the four options e leads to some like wacky ending. But <laughs> they're games that are like less about the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and more about the decisions, choices, and endings that you can create. And I've realized that that is a genre that I am going to make a lot of time for because uh, <laughs> it, fits, it, it fits right into my time budget. You know, wh what I have allowed myself to do with gaming and uh yeah i think i think you're gonna hear a lot more from that kind of genre from me in the near future next on my list was uh, aztec forgotten gods uh, this is by lienzo the creators of mulaca which was uh a mexican uh action platformer uh that dug into the the rich tapestry of of mexican culture um it it was well reviewed on switch um and that's and it that's where it really got a, a good hold uh, and they are basically doing the same thing with aztec forgotten gods except this is more like a it looks a lot like an immortals phoenix rising sort of situation maybe a little bit less story based but um as the description here says it's the Cyberstone action adventure following Octli, uh, a young woman who battles the colossal forgotten gods. To uncover the truth behind her far future Mesoamerican metropolis, she'll have to turn the gods' power against them as she soars through the city with power and grace. It's got this really beautiful art style that really brings to mind like the Wakanda vision, but for... Uh, it's pronounced the... Wanda vision? <laughs> right <laughs> it kind of brings the wakanda feel to mexico and lienzo the developers um are a, a studio that uh is located in chihuahua mexico and they put their traditions and their culture as like the major point of their games they have a message to to tell they have stories uh for a specific culture and they embrace it it just looks super cool, uh, very uh, intriguing as far as the designs of everything. It is, it is a culture that we don't see a whole lot of. We see appropriated in different ways. Like, if you'll look at the, uh, I might even pop it into the video here. Um, if you look at the, the screenshot on the eShop, it looks like something that you would see in like Godfall or something, mm -hmm. but in the in the two D plane and. Uh, these designs are things that that came about because of Aztec art and things like that. It's it's a very intriguing thing to see, um, and representation here is so important, and it's great to see um, 
just how how games are coming about like this uh like we had we had an action platformer raji uh last year that came out uh, and now this along with mulaka um just super cool to see different cultures actually getting representation um and it looks like it's actually going to be a hell of a game mm-hmm. so very excited and that comes out uh in fall of 2021 did you have another one? Oh, i'm fresh out fresh okay. out okay <laughs> uh, uh yeah, there, I, was... I mean there's a, there's a cool trailer for uh the sub zero su- the subnautica subnautica yeah arctic uh something oh my god i know what you're talking about but i don't remember yeah what yeah yeah what the name is i watched uh, armada <laughs> qb uh, Q U J B E. You should go follow her on Twitch. Uh, <laughs> she's been playing a ton of that for a long time. She's been playing the beta, so now uh, the official game is on its way. I think it's out uh, in May. Um, the trailer is very cinematic. Like it doesn't look like the gameplay, but the cinematic is pretty cool, and the gameplay is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I I don't have a lot to say about that except go watch the trailer <laughs> and go follow QB. It's uh, Subnautica Below Zero. Below Zero. Yes. So that comes out in a month. And um, the the cool thing about that, too, is not everybody will know this, but I watched a video over Subnautica the other day. Uh, and apparently, because it's just now coming to Switch, they actually um, kind of... It's, it's almost like a remaster. The original game of Subnautica is almost a remaster uh, really? on the Switch version because they were working on below zero at the same time while they were porting so it's it's basically not even a port of the original subnautica so like now is the time if you are a switch owner and you subnautica looks like a game you're going to be into just get it it's going to be worth it and go ask qb (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah so subnautica is a game you explore the ocean depths you crash on an alien planet and you have to go like harvest undersea materials to keep your submarine and tip top shape and expand and grow and all this stuff and explore spooky depths. And that's a game that I will watch because I am very afraid of deep dark water that I can't see through. No, thank you. <laughs> um, I did have a, a quick one as well. Uh, the house of the dead remake. This was like the least expected out of all of the announcements in the indie world showcase. <laughs> yeah, uh, But <laughs> A lot of people were down for it. Twitter kind of exploded with everything Indie World yesterday. But House of the Dead, if you don't know what House of the Dead is, you are missing out. But it's uh, it's the classic arcade shooter. Um, specifically, House of the Dead came out in 1997. Like, what? Uh, but it's a classic rail shooter before Time Crisis really got going. Um, House of the Dead ruled the world with zombies. Like, I think think it was maybe just a couple months after after resident evil came out maybe that's it was one of the first of the big zombie titles out there and uh forever entertainment uh who also made the panzer dragoon remake last year that i freaking love and can't get enough of uh is doing this game so uh it's gonna be very if it's anything like panzer dragoon remake was it's going to be stupid faithful to the original gameplay um but with a nice coat of paint on it so definitely looking forward to that and i'm pretty sure it's it's probably going to be like no more than 25 bucks so mm-hmm. yeah for i can't imagine sake, that's that worth being it. more than 25 yeah yeah uh that looks cool uh that's that's like one of the throwbacks when we go to the local barcade around here um i like playing those rail shooters they really are a, a fun throwback yeah, one of those retro, like hard to recreate co-op experiences. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if, I, if Nintendo brings out a new light gun with that, oh, <laughs> that's the way. <laughs> Man, that would be cool if they actually did that. 